So I was like, I was probably tense, and so I wasn't able to communicate properly my intent to study in the United States. So it was like, okay, all right, today I intend to um, approve your, uh, grant you your visa. And you know the next question, sir? Exactly. <laughs> like, if you, if you don't ask that question, you didn't, you didn't work for this. You didn't work for this. You didn't. You didn't. So, guys, I'm going to give you the honest truth. Um, between Lagos and ABJ, I know God was totally involved in mine, but really, if you have the chance to go to ABJ, I'm not telling you because the consular officers are easier. I'm just telling you that ABJ is better because it's psychologically more relaxing. Don't bank on any consular officer, whether it seems like they are being nice or not nice. Not very Please. vital. Like, don't be doing, you know, because in Lagos, I did that and I was praying, oh God, send me to the long hair guy. It's the long hair guy that rejected me. It's okay to be tense, guys. It is okay. This is where the problem is. And I learned it the hard way. Embrace the agitation. Recognize your things. Recognize it. Yeah? So. I don't really like the US. I'm just here because of the school, sincerely. Um, so at this point, I was like, I'm done. I tried. I paid my dues. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, um, I was going out. The only thing that kept me at that embassy was I was waiting for my friend. Mind you, my friend is very smart. So yeah. I was expecting to rejoice on something that day. He didn't get it. He didn't. So it's not about being smart. That's that's one it's thing not. about you know going to the embassy for it's that not about how I smart learned. you are. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not. Yeah. So he got out, he told me he didn't get it. So I was like, ah, our own has finished today. Um and I was going back. I just thought I'll I'll go back and continue working and Maybe we'll start rubbing or something <laughs> later. Because <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing with my life. Oh my god. No, seriously. But while I was leaving, God stepped in again. Now, there's this lady. She had not done an interview, but she was so interested in my interview. I'm, I was so confused. They sent her out. Think of this. Will you do this? The consular officer sent you out because you had passport issues. Now, you're trying to get your passport taken. But instead of doing that and quickly returning back, because he told you he's giving you five minutes, while you are taking your passport, you are encouraging me to say my story to you. Can you do that? Hmm. Is that even done? So this lady was just all up in my face like, come on, what happened? Tell me, tell me. And I'm like, ah, it's this one. I want to hear my bad news. So I started talking to her and I spoke and spoke and spoke with her. And uh, she was like, you can apply again. I'm like looking at this lady like, are you going to give me the money? What's wrong with you? Yeah. So we got talking and she didn't let it go. She was like, I can apply again. And in essence, what she was saying is that I am going to apply again. Like I was like, ah. I, I said, I've left this thing because the thing is I had other admissions in the UK. I had like three admissions in the UK, if I can remember. And they were all top schools in the same field. So I'm like, even if I want to do any other thing, that's where I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. But this lady was all up in my face and she came there with her fiance. So she told her fiance to stay with me. And she gave her fiance, she gave me a phone that I should look through what they call this, the Naira land, that she knows of someone that got rejected one day and applied and got it the next week. So she was just like, no, you must reapply again, try again. I was just smiling, but in my mind, I just knew this lady is wasting her time. I scrolled through the phone as if I was checking. 
when I was done, I gave the fee and said, hey, thank you. I just told my friend, let's go. As God will have it, that girl and her fiance lodged at my hotel. Oh. Yeah. So while I was in the hotel, like I actually planned to give my friend, because there's free breakfast, I planned to give him the breakfast because he was so sad. And I understood why. And he was annoyed I wasn't sad. But what he didn't know is that two people can't be sad at the same time. It's going to be bad. He had already paid $10,000 plus because he had started school online. So he's like, why won't they let him? All that was happening. This girl was coming. I was staying at the height of the um, hotel. So I saw her with her fiance coming back to the hotel on a bike. As they got there, she called. She said, I should come downstairs. That she wants to talk with me at the dining. That's how I got downstairs. We started talking. My friend, his sister has come to pick him. So um, we got talking. Yeah, I'll just try and make it short. We got talking and it was still the same story. You are going to reapply. You are going to reapply. This lady pressured me until I actually said yes. Yeah. So she pressured me, pressured me. She she missed our own interview. Aww. So to encourage me, she I don't know why she was so bent on encouraging me. To encourage me, she had already reapplied. She had already um, tried to pick another appointment date. But this time in Abuja, right? And she told me, I should try to, I should try. I should try Abuja. And I told this girl, so I'll go to Abuja because of interview. It doesn't make sense. The UK is there. I agreed because she was all up on me. She was all up in my face. Her and her fiance, like, they disturbed me. And I said, okay. She said I should do it on her phone. She logged out. She said I should log in, that I should pick an appointment. I said, sister, calm down. I will do it on Monday. I promise with the whole of my life. On Monday, I will, I will book. So I said, okay. We all left. And on Monday, I actually just told her that for telling sake, I thought I won't do it. But on Monday, I don't know what happened. The only thing that made sense to me, because I'm this kind of to-do list person and my list must get done. The only thing that popped up on my to-do list was go and pay a new visa fee and book this thing. It was, it was almost the same as the way the girl was shouting on me on Friday. It was all up in my head. So I had to leave the house. I got to GTB. I made the payment, got my receipt. As I got home, I started processing. I didn't want to say anybody. I processed, processed, processed. Went on the um, page, picked an appointment day for Abuja. And the earliest appointment date there was um, March 3rd. 2021 normal appointment in Abuja for Lagos no hope no hope for <laughs> the booking seriously because Lagos wouldn't be make sense Lagos was in Lagos is in April 2021 normal appointment so I got that and I called the girl I called my friend I said this is what I've done and for the girl because I'm sure she would have been calling my life the whole day we did all that I did this by 11 a.m. I got my appointment by 1 p.m. I was, I ran mad again. <laughs> to get an expedited, you have to get a normal first. First. Yeah, so that's the normal I got, third of March. So I now asked for an expedited. The next thing I saw approval, ABJ, um, your time is 7, 8.45. <laughs> Was shocked, but I was like, I'm going to ABJ. <laughs> I'm serious, so I was so happy. And this time, we are not going to mess it up. This time, I prepared so much that I started answering questions in my dream, which is good. Yeah, it was like, already there. You can't, you were leaving it, it. was there. Mm-hmm. So, um, fast forward to ABJ. Mind you, my friend did the same thing. He didn't get. See? It's divine again because 
when we all did this, hmm, I told you what the rule is. Is there on their side? You can't get two expedited appointments. They didn't even stipulate the time. You can't get two. It's not done. I got you. Now that message. I and my friend did almost the same time that day, and they sent him that message that you can't get to. Whoa! Do you get? I didn't tell him that too, because that would be so demoralizing. Exactly. But at that point, I knew it was divine. Like I was like, ah. another thing. You see that girl that forced me to do all these things. See today, her number has not been going. What? It is so annoying. Her number is not reachable. It doesn't ring. You don't know her name on social media or anything like that. I can't track her. I can't even remember her name. That day she told me her name. I've not even saved it on my on my phone. Her fiance, I don't know the fiance. I just know they are from Ibadan. I didn't hear from them again. I hope someday she just watches the video or anything. Just yeah, like looking for God the use her. And God bless. Really thank you if you see this. So. ABJ. This time I was so detailed because I can be quite meticulous. So I really searched for a hotel. Now this hotel, you know, this hotel I did in Lagos, I have I still had to take an Uber. This one I was going to get in ABJ. I had to be able to walk to the embassy, and it still has to be cheap. So I did that, and guys, I keep advertising them because it's a good deal. I got Bolingo. Bolingo Hotels is really close to the embassy and it's cheap. It goes for 20 something k. Weekends is I think weekdays is cheaper 18 then weekends 20 something. So you can plan yourself and book a night. You are good. It's actually good. So when in ABJ it was good for me cuz I didn't have to tell my people at work. It was on a Monday and we were following covid protocol so we work tuesdays thursdays so i just left lagos friday taka came to lagos monday night nobody knew anything that's why it was and i liked it like that so abj i'm in the hotel first of all they have these people their assistants i don't know i forgotten the name in french but they usually write it in french these people they usually just assist people in the hotel so i got to the reception i said where is the embassy they told me they told the guy to take me there so sunday night my interview was on monday sunday afternoon i and the guy walked to the embassy walked to the gate gang gang i saw the gate so i saw it i saw the pattern of where i was going to work and guys please do that if you can exactly lagos or abj i didn't know how important it was but guys i want to tell you it's important because it boosts your confidence is psychological just waking up and you know exactly where you're going to just gives you confidence so do that so i did that and rehearsed and my own method of rehearsal was something like this i sit in my laptop um, in front of my laptop and i have my questions by the side of my laptop so because of that first interview experience i had the consular officer's face was already in my head so I, i literally see him through the screen so i help him ask the questions in my head and i answer and i'm seeing my gesticulations i'm seeing everything so i kept on building i have close to 50 videos on that just progressively building myself on every question you know the way we communicate in nigeria is different from the way we do it Yeah, the eye contact thing and all that. Get that sorted out. So interview day. Obviously, I'm confident. I have my bottle of water. I have my documents. I practice for every question I know. I've made like alternatives to every question. So you know, one question can be asked in three different ways. I had done that alternation and I'd given ans- the same answers to every alternation. I was ready by God's grace. I was down there. I walked to the place. You can't go in with your bottle of water. Drank it where I could, dropped it. Walked to where for well, ABJ is quite different. Those that are going ABJ would testify. So you get somewhere, you show your um appointment letter, you show your passport, you show your DS160. Yeah. 
for them to make confirmations and all that. Yeah. You do that, then you sit down. They give you a space to sit down. Guys, I'm going to give you the honest truth. Um between Lagos and ABJ, I know God was totally involved in mine, but really if you have the chance to go to ABJ, I'm not telling you because the consular officers are easier. I'm just telling you that ABJ is better because it's psychologically more relaxing. The atmosphere is calmer, please. If you can go to ABJ, go. If you can't and it has to be Lagos, try to make yourself comfortable. So, I got seated. Then you get to a space where um you go through another screening kind of where you pass a metal detector. Yeah. Then there's this lady that is going to check your passport. Now, um there might be a lot of um opinions on this but I took every single passport that has been given to me in this life. I have three old passports, one new passport. I took every single thing. Now, I hadn't traveled so much. I only traveled for one competition one time in 2014. So I don't have records. This lady, I gave her my new passport. And she threw it back at me. When she tried to scan it, she threw it back at me. She said, "Give me something I can work with." So at that point it just clicked to me. She wanted to see a visa. So I gave her one of the old ones that I had that one I went for the competition. So guys, take all your passports. It helps. Even though one guy will keep telling you stop attaching it together. Hey, Tell him, let them be the one to see that yeah, they don't need it, but have yeah. it handy. Imagine they if you don't need it. <laughs> your house say, like, "Oh my god." Oh. So I went through that and yeah, nice at ABJ. So the people there they were like, "Good luck." And I was like, yeah, thank you. I walked to another section. This is the interview area now. Um you're going to be asked to sit down again. Right? Another thing guys. This is for ABJ people. I don't know how to I I'll find a way to address it for Lagos but for ABJ. The way they will tell you to sit down, there's a place they tell you to sit down and there's a door. When you go in through that door, that's your interview section. Now when you are outside That same door that you used to go in, there's another space for people to go out where you can see. Please don't look at the people coming out. Try not to hear their expressions. Try not to see whether they give them or not. Try not to see whether they are happy or not. The reason is because that happened in my first interview in Lagos. I saw every color of paper they used to deny people. That just agitated me a lot. So in ABG, my eyes were glued to the ground. Once I see anyone coming out, I must not see you and as much as possible I try not to hear what you're doing. Okay. So I sat at that section and for some reason I was intense because I believe the reason why I murmured in Lagos was because I was tense. So I was intense. I was relaxed. When people were coming out, I just looked down. When I look up, you know, I'm talking with God. I'm like, ah, these trees are beautiful. You know, just to make sure I'm not looking at anyone. Yeah. So all that happened. Then you go in again. You meet another black lady that will handle your documents. But then it's not like Lagos. You don't now go and queue. You go back outside to sit down. So I sat down there. I occasionally went to ease myself because you know I need to be relaxed. So I go back in. and they pick you in for interviews in set of previous abuja is good so those set of three people will go you don't go and stand though. you go and sit down inside the space for the interviewing then here all the counters were full in abuja there was one consular for everything but i think there were two for the f1 visas let's go to the interview place i was sitting down we were three Now just like Lagos I think that's how all embassies are designed you can hear everything yeah but I made okay. conscious yeah. effort as long as I wasn't looking at them it was a lot easier for me to divert my hearing from there so I made sure I didn't focus at all there was this guy they called up next before me right 
they called him up he spoke confidently then at the end of it they denied him right i i told you that i didn't focus but how come i knew about that that's because this one was directly in front of me i couldn't avoid so when that happened that guy that was really sorrowful because he was really destabilized as the man said no he didn't know what to do he literally walked back to where we were to sit down until the security guy came to explain to him that you can't sit down you're supposed to go out so he stood up turned around again and sat down and he was just destabilized yeah, yeah? yeah. so i just i was confident sitting down waiting we were ready for this so i just when the man called me up cuz this is another thing please you guys now you can see i'm not doing clicks again cuz it's getting <laughs> serious cuz um don't bank on any consular officer whether it seems like they are being nice or not nice not very please. vital like don't be doing you know cuz in lagos i did that and i was praying oh god send me to the long hair guy is the long hair guy that I rejected me don't focus now more so i had every reason to bank on a consular officer because so the first time i had seen a black consular officer in abj it was one black guy one white guy so there was every tendency for me to say oh no as this guy come out like this i will come that consular you understand but when i was looking at it even the girl beside me was agitated because she wanted to go to that guy i just sat down i was like what well, anyone you know just stay so when the guy left the lady was trying to jump on me i just sat down so when she jumped on the white guy called her <laughs> oh my god <laughs> please the black guy the black guy now called me up so i was forming confident ah it's okay to be tense guys it is okay this is where the problem is and i learned it the hard way embrace the agitation recognize you are tense recognize it yeah so i got up there for the first time in my life i'm not exaggerating i heard my heart beat in my head I heard it in my head and it was so loud. I was like god god god. You know, I was so tense, but I just I was like god, I'm tense, I'm tense. Just relax on here. So ah, I was just calm. I just relaxed. Yeah. yeah, so the man started with um you know the normal thing now, pass me your ID and your passport. We did all that. Then after that he said um So how did you come about this school? You see, he just tweaked it a little, but yeah. it means the same thing. How did you come about this school? Um, we have it. We have it in the hard hive. Mm-hmm. We deliver it. <laughs> so, we started talking like I told him everything. He was nodding his head. Say, "Yeah, we got this. We got this." So, he finished that question. He was like, "Okay." So, he now said, "Mind you, they don't look at you. It doesn't matter." <laughs> so, he just said, "Okay." So he left his computer as like okay so why why how with this program you are going for benefit you how will it benefit you that was the next thing he asked and we have it in our hacker we just deliver it as a thing so we you know i delivered what um i told him about um how i finally found my bearing because i attended a workshop through my office I don't want to get into all that. But yeah, I just spoke about that and he was like, "Okay." Then he came again. He said, "Why um who is sponsoring?" And I told him. And who um what does the person do? And I told him. Then he said, "How long is the program?" Even though you can see it on the i20. Um I told him. Then he now asked, "Finally, at this point again he left his computer finally he was not like so why do you think they rejected you in lagos exactly that's the question i was waiting for mm. so and guys i think at this point god just gave me the visa because when i answered this you were like out of all the nodding the guy nodded that was the heaviest one it was like 
you know that kind of bam you got it there yeah so like he asked me and you know the paper they give you the paper specifies um under section 124b 214b um states that you were not able to communicate your intent or blah blah so i was like i was probably tense and so i wasn't able to communicate properly my intents to study in the united states so it was like okay all right and today i intend to um approve your uh, grant you your visa and you know the next question sir exactly <laughs> like if you if you don't ask that question you didn't be- work for this you didn't work for this you didn't you didn't so i i like as as a sir you said i intend to approve your visa now go to that counter make your payment and return back to this counter thank you sir <clears throat> so i don't know why everyone was calm i wanted to shout ah. but you know everyone was for me posh so <laughs> god god oh god oh, thank you <laughs> but you know <laughs> everyone was so No, it's true now because everyone was forming posh. You know, in Abuja, all those mm. all those people there. You know, they have things easy. Yes. They don't struggle. Mm-hmm. So, like one guy I saw, they granted. He was like, "Oh, thank you." Like, and he just went calm, so cheje, like he not struggle. Where is this so, one yeah, from? I just said, "Let me comport myself." Like, okay, thank you, Lord. I made the payment. I went back to the counter, and the guy gave me the instructions for how to collect my passport. I'm on that so we see I'm on straight to the airport. Yeah. I go back to wait for my flight back to Lagos. How we got the visa? That's the that my experience. Wonderful, very detailed experience right there. And I like the fact that you were not only just talking about your questions. You you gave us details about how the environment was and how you can, you know, tune your mind to things that would actually get you more relaxed versus tuning into things that can get you distracted. So, in in my sorry, Valen. Yeah. Valen, one last thing before I just let you. Okay. Uh, for the I20, yeah? For that I20, please get your uh service advice. Is that what they call them, yeah? The service advisor of the school. Yeah? Okay. I think that's what they call them, right? No, the officer that handles your stuff. I for me I think it's the DSO um designated uh, to uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, yes. sorry. Yes, that official that handles yes. everything for mm-hmm. you. So, make sure the person signs your I20. I don't know why they didn't sign my first I20. Oh. They, no, like they signed it, but what I mean is the second page, they usually put sign. a signature there. plus i received a merit award this merit award they did not reflect it on my i20 so i you know there were discrepancies like it didn't look right because the first bill asked that why why do you talk about this kind of merit and it's not here yeah so please guys follow up with the school sometimes they can get choked up and if you don't speak up nothing will be done for you so 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 yeah so yeah So let me let you. All right. So I really enjoyed it and I I believe that a lot of people will learn from this video in particular especially the nuggets that you were giving, you know, from I and the we learned from the best were now. giving Lagos versus Abuja embassy and all yeah. of that. That would very very, you know, be very very helpful to a lot of people. So now that you got your visa, you were excited, you couldn't really shout and everything, you know, finally you, you went back home. What then did you do? How then did you pre- prepared to you know come to the US and how did you what was your experience like when you were you know flying down to the United States of America and how has it been so far